Welcome to The Kindness Effect, a good news channel that's all about the inherent goodness that lies within each one of us. How often are you kind during the day? Do you practice random acts of kindness? Hi, I'm Judy Martini, your host and producer, and I would love for you to join me as I showcase how kindness shows up in your community and all over the world. You know, research has shown that kindness makes us happier. Kindness changes lives. Kindness is good for the heart. Kindness improves relationships and it slows our aging. So I say let's bring on some more kindness. Scientific research also adds that not only does being kind make you feel good, but it offers significant health benefits physically and mentally. Each show will leave you touched in a heartfelt way to live a life of kindness to others. And most of all, first and foremost, to you. You know, they say you can't give from an empty cup. You must fill your cup first and give from the overflow. At the end of each show, I will highlight some ways for you to feel good and how to be kind to yourself so that you can begin or continue to live your inherent goodness that is within each one of you. Each single act produces a ripple effect which spans the globe. Watch as these people continue to change the lives of many around the world, producing ripple effects of kindness. You know, Mark Twain says, kindness is a language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Enjoy the show. I'm not trying to put kindness into a bank so I can get it back. I'm only concerned about having kindness there to look after folks. You know, I, I could tell you what it is. It's my mother, she was one of these people. No matter what she did, she was always helping someone. It rubbed off on her son. And I do help. I do help whenever I can. They have asked and my act of kindness is to help them out. In today's world, it's become uh, the whole idea of community, the whole idea of family just doesn't exist as it once did. And my acts of kindness are from a different day, time and a different age where it was, you know, always help your fellow person if you can. I see so many situations today where something is happening and nobody comes to the attention of, nobody comes to the assistance of the person who's being abused. And that is something where we should have more kindness in the world to help with that. Unfortunately, it's not taught. You can't teach kindness. You can teach respect. You can teach assistance. You can teach help, teach help, but far, too few people actually practice it every day. Well, it's an extremely fulfilling life for me to be kind to everybody else. I'm not doing these things specifically so I can get another client or so I can get some financial advantage. I'm not doing it for any purpose other than it's my nature to help people and to try and make them a better person and to make my world a better world teach people. I'm a teacher. I teach people things, how to do things. People come to me for counsel. I have to respond to it. I don't just close my door and go home at five o'clock. This is the kind of person I am. And that's what I want to be and I get enormous satisfaction just by being a helper, a source, a confidant of many, many people. What's interesting is that my mother was the daughter of two ministers and they traveled across North America with a tent in the 1890s and the 1910 into 1920. And that's where I learned to look after your fellow man because we are a community and this is what she did. My grandfather used to go into town, have a revival meeting on Saturday and Sunday on Monday, he would hand out the collection plate to the indigent in town, and then they'd move on to the next town. And that's what my mother learned. And that's, she, you know, at three years of age, she's skipping up and down the aisle 
with a collection plate, only to watch your father give it away on Monday, and then they would pack and go to the next town. That was even before automobiles. That was with horses pulling the wagon. I don't have a call of duty. There's no measurement. There's no yardstick. I will go ahead and do anything for my clients because I get personal satisfaction out of it. Very hedonistic, very self-serving to myself, but I get pleasure out of helping other people. Without it, I'm, I'm just a shell. Without it, I'm just an accountant. So kindness to me is the most important thing for humans to show because it just means we respect one another. We see one another and kindness is something that without it, the aspect of being human is hollow. And kindness is, is coming from the heart. It's doing what your heart tells you is the right thing to say or do when you're with another person, when you're with another human. And it is a heart opening. It's opening your heart to another. It's receiving and giving all at the same time. If more people were kind, if we were all kind, I think the world would be a happier place. I think that we would all feel supported and loved and seen. And, and if that were the case, if we ever experienced any hardship, it would be short-lived because the next person you see would share some kindness, warm your heart, and, and, and on we go. Emotions are energy. And if the world was of people that were kind that would be such a high vibration energy we would all be that and be surrounded by that and high vibration would stay high vibration the world would be a very different place and it's doable it's a choice choose kindness. So if we were all focused on kindness, that high vibration would allow us to have a different perception of life. The, the high vibration, the high energy is is a, is a vibration of the energy of love and there would be love everywhere and that high vibration like a tuning fork if there's a sense of a lower vibration or an experience of hardship or sadness that kindness vibration would tune us and bring us back up to that vibration of love so in a kindness world, a world full of kindness, we wouldn't need to fight, we wouldn't need to argue. We would be respecting one another's differences of opinions. We're human, we'll all have different perspectives. But if we listen with our open heart and the person that had a difference of opinion and was experiencing some difficulty in expressing that, if they heard, it would dissipate. That anger or fear or worry or whatever it is would just dissipate because they feel valued and, and loved. 
And we work together as a community. We work together, not separate. So if people were kind to each other, and we came together as community to support one another, that separate feeling, that, that feeling of, I need to be better than the next person, or my way is the only way, you're wrong. That would be, would be totally unnecessary. Working together for a common goal, respecting somebody else's opinions or wisdom, listening, If you're, if you're heard for your wisdom, in my experience, more wisdom comes through. If you're condemned or, or disagreed with, it shuts you down. So we would all blossom and grow in this community if we were all kind to each other. Kindness means helping children. Kindness means helping people without expecting a single thing in return. Kindness means giving ice cream to little children. Kindness means helping old people. Kindness means helping people who cannot help themselves. Kindness means never expecting anything back, just the goodness that it feels to do kindness. I practice kindness quite often. I'm a Shriner. And I do, uh, I drive sick kids to Shriner hospitals in Erie, Pennsylvania, and Montreal, and, and uh, we don't ever get anything back from anybody. We just try and help children that, that the regular system can't help. And, uh, and in my general daily life, I help all, anybody that I can all the time. My phone's ringing off the hook all the time. I'm too helpful, my wife can't stand it. <laughs> well, if people were more kind, then people would listen to other people. Politicians would not be so stuck on hating the other wing. The right wing hates the left, the left wing hates the right. But people gotta listen to each other. Kindness would simply mean you have to be kind and understand what someone with an opposite opinion of you is trying to say and take it into consideration and before you make your decision and say your piece. That to me is the ultimate kindness. The world would look a whole lot different. There'd be no wars and, and uh, no famine, no poverty. I guess finally kindness is just what makes the world go around. Without it, nastiness would, would rule and and we'd be we'd obliterate the planet I'm sure but kindness is is what you need every day and everybody so that's it it's just in us to give it's within us to give kindness it, it has to be spontaneous somehow it has to come from here and a huge willingness to want to do any kind of kindness and kindness uh, can comes in many forms too so for instance you, know, you can do a magnanimous act of kindness or you can just let somebody in line at the grocery store ahead of you or smile at somebody on the street or I mean those are the involuntary things you know they just they just happen I think we're we all have potential to be kind some of us are kinder than others and um, Again, it's an involuntary thing, I think. So, might be a bit learned in the home, that kind of thing. Oh, I've had loads of people be very kind to me. So, um, I think I, I um, love when I see that. I love when I'm on the receiving end of it. I adore it. And uh, it motivates me to reciprocate. And that's what makes the world go around. Mirthwalk is a pool of uh, resources to help people afford alternative healing.
I wanted, I wanted to donate to uh, mental health because, why, no particular reason, but uh, personal reasons probably, um, but I didn't, what I got around the system was that it, it just feeds pill pushing and uh, my little contribution wasn't going to make any difference. Um, and then I, I realized that I'd been doing a lot of uh, alternative healing and made friends with a lot of alternative healers and that was really the, the bench that I had going for myself that was sustaining me and making me see a different side of life and a different way of self-care. And um, it was working for me. And I thought, you know, it's pretty simple actually. It's really, it's the one thing that, that all, uh, um, conventional medicine doesn't do is they don't go into your head and see how you're doing here because mental or health in general is affected by stress. So uh, with the alternative healing, what I find happens more often than not is that there's counsel around that and uh, and they most of the alternative practices buy into the idea that you're affected your health is affected by what you think and i thought well that's darn simple let's why don't, why don't we just and then all of a sudden like the, uh, i was hit by a bolt of lightning and mirthwalk was born and i i realized that first of all the name came just like that logo fell into place and it was inspired it was truly inspired it's a simple fix really that isn't addressed by mental health situations or not i shouldn't say mental health but health in general and um the health the 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 health care practices that are going on right now that are covered these are not covered for the most part so to me it it is going to facilitate or at least help facilitate somebody's healing even if I only helped one person you know I apparently have helped a few other people since then which was really good so I feel good about that I feel good about myself I feel good about contributing to the condition of the planet really um, that's how I feel about it I'm sympathetic to people who are struggling I've done my share of struggling, volunteering, or any of those things that people do. It's, it's, it's all the same. This is just my way of being able to contribute. And um, everybody's got something in their back pocket that they can, they can give away. It doesn't have to be money. <laughs> so what I envision about Mirthwalk is that it's a template. This, this one in Orangeville is the original. It'll be a template. We'll see if it works or not. And, um, and then that template can be moved from one community to another. And there's, I see a, a global thing happening too, you know, where we can get back to grassroots and, and you know, eat, uh, like take the medicine from the land like we did in the first place, you know? So um, that's my little dream. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I, I think it gives people a, another way of looking at things. Um, recently it came to me, because I really believe that these, this is, the, the thrust is, is um, that it, alternative healing helps people get closer to themselves and discover more about themselves and to realize that, that maybe things aren't as bad as they thought and that affects their health and they can grow and that affects the community, every little step up that we take and the compassion grows because then people are feeling better and they're helping each other and nowhere to go but up, you know? So uh, I think it, I think Alternative healing for me has helped me get closer to my own personal spirituality and I think that's something we have to do is get right with ourselves, you know, so um, I feel righter with myself than I ever have. I have my days, that happens, but um, I'm faster at sort of um, remedying that. Kindness is growing. Kindness is growing. Kindness is sexy. 
in my heart of hearts I know In your heart of hearts you know too The mysteries of life Cannot be understood overnight Some nights are so terrible long could feel so the memories come the dawn in the morning when you rise wipe the sleep out of your eyes kindness is growing kindness is growing kindness is sexy kindness is sexy sexy so one of the ways I live kindness is uh, making sure that I express kindness to myself. So I really monitor what I say to myself and how I treat myself. Because if I wouldn't say that to somebody else, um, I make sure that I don't say it to myself. And uh, far, as far as kindness to others, well, I'm a baker. I love to bake. It's actually really a stress reliever for me. And one of the things that I do is I just randomly bake and I give it away to my friends that I know will appreciate it. Do I receive acts of kindness? Absolutely, absolutely I do. Um, and I'm always surprised uh, when I receive them. For example, one time I was really, really sick and a, a friend came over and brought me chicken soup just because they knew it would make me feel better. And it was, it was such a surprise, and it was so appreciated. My friends treat me with acts of kindness all the time. When we go out, you know, they'll randomly you know, pay for my movie ticket just because. Um, and, and then we reciprocate, but it's that random act of kindness, well, random act of kindness from my friends. Um, and there was no reason for it. They didn't want anything in return, they just wanted um, they just wanted me to feel better. So if everyone was kind in this world, what would that look like? Oh my goodness. That's such an exciting prospect to, to think of what the world would be like if everyone was kind. I think that we would uh, be more connected. We would actually realize that we're not so different from each other. And there will be the um, increased level of like compassion and empathy for each other. We would be looking out for each other. We wouldn't be, you know, so selfish um, and, and only caring about, you know, what did I get? We would be really making sure that our neighbors are taken care of, that, you know, everybody has enough food to eat. Everybody has clean water to drink. Uh, I don't think there would be any wars because, you know, we would realize that we're actually, we only, we want the same things. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants, uh, you know, a healthy family and to be healthy and to have what they need uh, to, to exist in this world. And I think, you know, the prospect of having a world that just works for everybody is so beautiful and it's such an exciting thing um, and I think it actually is possible I just feel like there's a shift happening and kindness is our access to to manifesting that shift and having a world that works for everyone kindness is the simplest easiest thing you can do to inject a little happiness into your day and into somebody else's day so who are you going to go out and uh, inject a little happiness into today? To me, kindness is helping other people, um, doing things for them without expecting anything in return, um, things from the kindness of your heart, giving, sharing your ideas, just basically helping uh, as many people as you can and doing things from the bottom of your heart. To me, that's what kindness is. The world would be such a different place if we all, if every single person in the world did one small, even a small act of kindness every single day, can you imagine the effect that it would have? It would just sort of bounce out. It would just go boing, boing, boing all the way across and just people would be happier, people wouldn't be so 
grumpy going to work in the morning and driving to their job that they don't like, if there was just something kind that happened to them, and if every single person just sort of did one act of kindness every single day and not just on a special occasion or, you know, just because, they, you know, like every single day, it would just sort of ripple, it would be like a ripple effect. And I think the world would obviously be a better place for that. And just raising the consciousness and awareness that how important that is and raising the vibration and just making everything so much better, people just realize that. I feel that kindness is an incredible, powerful, amazing gift that you can give to someone, you can inspire someone by doing that. Um, kindness is a huge deal. Kindness, there's more of that. We need more of that in this world. We need more people to be kinder to one another, more compassionate to one another. Kindness to me is filling up each other's bucket. So I'm a former kindergarten teacher and there's a book called, you know, filling your bucket. And when you're not kind to someone, you, you dip into their bucket and then you also dip into your bucket as well. And so being kind is part of what we teach with the kids is, you know, fill up someone's bucket. And it's the same thing as I talked before about emptying your gas tank, you know, same as a bucket. If it's empty, you need it to be filled in order to be fulfilled, right? So. I feel like kindness is an awesome way to fill people's pockets. Did you know that getting quality sleep is one of the best things that you can do for your health. You know, a good night's sleep is vital to our physical health and emotional well-being. That's why the benefits of good sleep should never be underestimated and why getting a proper rest on a regular basis isn't just a good idea, it's an essential one. Did you know that sleep helps reduce stress? And don't we all have stresses in today's world? Deep and regular sleep can help prevent stress. Sleep can also improve your memory. And did you know that sleep will lower your blood pressure? And sleep also helps your body to fight back, build your immune system. And it also helps you maintain your weight. You know, it re regulates the hormones that affect your appetite. Sleep also puts you in a better mood. Lack of sleep can make us agitated, so we're more likely to snap at people. And sleep could reduce your chance of diabetes. Plus, it makes your heart healthy. It's also a painkiller. You know, when you sleep, you heal. Basically, the more sleep you get, the less pain you might be in. And also, sleep can make you smarter. Isn't that a good one? So, if you're not getting the sleep you need, try taking a nap. Try sleeping in longer, going to bed earlier, because sleeping is a matter of health. And your health really matters.